Okay. Hello there, Gia. Hi, Keisha. Hi. Uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, his real name is Adam Belanoff, but we're going to call him Bob today. Okay. And uh, what you should know about Adam is that he's had a very long and successful career in TV as a writer and a producer, um, beginning with what, Adam, the Cosby show? Oh, gosh. Um, Before that, the, the, I wrote uh, half an episode of Star Trek Next Generation. Well, yeah, that's see, that's what I thought Gia would find very interesting. Yeah, Go ahead, Gia. It's, it's a fan, it's a fan non favorite. It's called the Masterpiece Society. I think it was fifth season. But, I've uh, I've watched that episode. Believe yeah, it or not, it's yeah, particularly unremarkable. No, but, I thought um, it was good. I've that was the only episode I've ever watched, and I enjoyed oh, it. I Gia, do you want to do you want to gush a little bit, Gia? I don't know it by name, but I feel like. I can't believe a, you withheld this information from me. Well, I wow. thought you would like to discover it from yeah. Adam or Bob okay. himself. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm kind of a Star Trek geek, like, just over the years. So that's very cool. That's yeah, very cool. well, it was a genetically engineered society under a biosphere threatened by a passing comet. And Okay, um, yep, and, that's ringing a bell. Yeah, yeah, so we have to... The romance between Troy and the governor of the planet, kind of a... Young, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah. That's particularly yeah. why I think most fans uh, d don't rank it so highly. I think Troy romances <laughs> are, are just tend to get the, the lower rankings. Uh, but that's what interesting. I and no Borg, you know, nothing as exciting as, a, as assimilating the, the captain into I, the, the Borg. were very disturbing. That whole Picard with the Borg, and that was, those were dark times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was good. It was an awesome concept, but I, but it it was very disturbing. Mm. And you don't even know what we're talking about. No, no, no. I know and absolutely, shit. of course. <laughs> no, no, Keisha up oh, there. Keisha, uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, no, that. yeah, no. Gia, Gia has made fun of me for not having any sort of Star Trek background. Yeah, I'll make a reference to like something about you know oh, that one's got a the red, red shirt, shirts, right? And she yeah, has no idea right. that yeah. <laughs> No, the Borg was this tennis player who actually. Oh. Was a, oh, know, as like Bjorn Borg. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, watched, All right. Watched, uh, now I'm I listening. Last night I watched um whatever that weird one that what's it called Enterprise with uh, Scott Bakula. Oh right. Oh. Right. That you know it's got a weird like Canadian opening song that doesn't sound like any of the other Star Trek songs. It's it's hmm. it's weird, but. It was interesting because Cyrus Renault was on it and playing a bad. Oh, character. he's I mean, an he he's a character on on General Hospital. Uh, yeah, we don't know anybody's real names. <laughs> <laughs> no, including our own. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so that was your beginning. That was your beginning. And then, yep. and then from then, there into sitcoms for many years. Yep. Uh, yep. Wings mm -hmm. and Murphy Brown, and then yes, yep. Cosby. The name mm -hmm. that we don't like to speak so often these days, and then uh, sure. oh, and before that was Partners with John. Cryer. Oh yeah, yeah, we have John Cryer. Uh huh. Yeah, very fun show that only lasted a season, and then mm. uh, Titus. And yep. What about Joan? Which we didn't. Oh show yeah, before. Joan Cusack. That's Joan right. Cusack, That's right. right. Yeah. And then, and then at some point along that line, I I made the switch into one hour drama. And yep. that was when I, uh, I wrote an episode of Judging Amy, and then I worked mm -hmm. on Closer and Major Crimes. And that's right. That's like yep. 30 years right there. So yeah, that's wow. that. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good that's, for us. Yeah, that's a very impressive, very yeah, impressive. A career in television. I, I worked. I can say that I did actually work for many of those years. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah. And but never, never made it into the soap opera world, huh? I no, know. I, I have to say, <laughs> although um, one, of, one of the big bones of contention with my ex-wife, who you knew, Carol, right? My ex yeah, a little bit. Was that um, I couldn't get her to watch Raging Bull, but there was always a stack of VHS uh, uh, tapes filled with all my children. Oh, she, uh, OK. That was a yeah. really divi dividing line. Yeah, I see. Not, I see. So that might have not, soured not, you on the soap yeah, opera. Yeah, it didn't, didn't cause the the rupture, but I think that was as <laughs> close as as uh, I came to soap operas was watching yeah. or watching all my children. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. But gotcha. I'm I'm so excited to know that Robert Gossett, who's truly a wonderful guy, is is, is now, he? Yeah, really, just just really one of the nicest actors that I've worked with over those many years. It was 13 years between those yeah. two shows, and he was on for 
virtually all all of that. Yeah, he was, he was that's... shot. I don't know if you remember. Did you were you watching when when he when he was he took a bullet? Uh, he I took was a bullet. watching. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I told you about it. You didn't know. Mm -hmm. Keith, you don't that's know. tough. Tough for an actor. <laughs> to get yeah, yeah, that, to was, take a, that was a rough moment. We killed we killed a few people that year, and then they killed us. So I guess what goes around comes around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so for our for our listeners who don't know who Robert Gossett is by his real name, that's Marshall. That's Marshall, yeah. Marshall, who that's, wears that's generally a tiny hat, and he used yeah. to carry a tiny clarinet case, but he doesn't anymore. Does he have a little we, soul um, patch? Because he's like a hep jazz cat, right? Yeah, he, and we, <laughs> we absolutely yeah. hated it. We hated his character initially. I mean, yeah, we, we did. Were like bad mouth and bad mouth, and then there was a turning point, and I don't know what it was. But, I think uh, the people around him became even less likable, so he started to look good. Oh, that's a trick. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. I like feel you. like that's what happens a lot, you know, with some of these bad characters. Hmm. But yeah, so we we like him pretty pretty well now. And yeah, um, yeah actually, he's been one of the more sensitive, um, likable. Well, and he quit doing all that, like, yeah, man, that sort of scat jazz. <laughs> you know, he was. They were really landing on pretty thick with him. Yeah, for a people while. never like it when I scat either. I know. Well, you've got the sort of an underappreciated so art, I think. Right. Agreed. And yeah. Adam uh, or yeah. Bob, sorry, Bob. Yeah. Bob has a piano there, and Gia is also a musician. Um, no we sometimes. Well, that's, that's. What do you that, play that's there? That's not a lie. That's what, not a lie, what Gia. What do you play, Gia? I'm a hack. <laughs> I, I play the harmonica. Well, good. Blues, oh, yeah. blues harmonica sings, no, I, and also, I, I, I should apologize to my parents for the money it, for my education because, you know, <laughs> well, by the wayside now. So. Between the music career and this podcast, you don't think they'd be proud? Right. <laughs> they'd be so proud, wouldn't they? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. boy. Our families uh, know. Yeah, I know. They never expected this. And I don't think, yeah, you know, yeah. if you want to really lose friends or stop a conversation in its tracks, you tell people you have a podcast. Yeah, and you wear your T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, we, we both have our podcast T-shirts. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're so cool. So <laughs> I, I think, know. I think it would be so a great cool. conversation starter, honestly. So it's inter <laughs> interesting to know that. I will... I will actually start to, when I want a conversation to end, I will just. Yeah. If you see, feel yeah, like you, you've become work. too popular, that just say, you know, I, I, I was on a general hospital podcast. It's an experiment. Yeah. I, I, I will see. I'll report back. You can have. Yeah. I mean, G is really like my only friend at this point. <laughs> Well, that's been that way for a while. I mean, I we were both, we were blame. both that way long before the podcast. But, yeah, well, now we have I something to blame, I guess. About, you know, bar shampoo and that really. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah, well, I, that's shampoo. true. And, and, and Bob, you can see us. You can see the results of a week mm -hmm. of bar shampoo. Yeah. And I think, like, I was trying to show this haircut, which was, I think it was $18. <laughs> and uh, I could have done it with yeah. a weed whacker myself. It looks, it looks like 25, honestly. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's it really does. He's a gentleman. <laughs> I look like all Weird all Al Yankovic. Yeah. So <laughs> are we going to talk about this? Because I actually did not own a bar of bar so a bar shampoo until you yeah. got up in your email. So now yeah. I, I feel at least in terms of the concept, I'm a total convert. Uh, the results are, I'm still waiting. This was, today's was about only my second use because, uh, well, here's the story. So I love Harry's products, Harry's razors and Harry's okay. shaving cream. And and I was at the CVS about two months ago, and I saw a Harry's shampoo was on sale, like two, two uh, like buy one, get the second one half off. So it wasn't okay. even like a massive sale, but I thought like I loved everything else. I bought it. And then the first time I used it, I thought this is terrible, but now I own two bottles of it. So okay. I'm determined <laughs> to like, you ever that, you know, you ever get that? Yeah. It's like when you buy like a big bag of fake Oreos, but you just got to eat them all, the high drops or something. Yeah, just yeah. Because you just don't want to throw them out. So I'm finishing yeah. up the Harry's shampoo uh -huh. while I wait to fully <laughs> indulge in, in, uh -huh. in, in the bar, bar shampoo. Yeah. But I like and the idea. It's, it's very pretty. It is a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. And we've we've had mixed results, right, Gia? We've had we've had ups and downs, yeah. 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 Like the last the last ones I'm trying, 
they don't seem to soap up as well. And so I think I'm putting, putting it way too much on my hair. And so then I'm not mm -hmm. really rinsing it all up. I think if you let go of the concept of suds. Yeah, mm -hmm. suds. That, uh, suds, that's a myth, I think, created by the liquid shampoo people. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. convince you so, that suds equal cleanliness, okay? The evil in the world. First, it's the plastics, the plastic yeah. people, and then the suds people. Yeah, the yep. suds people. That's a that's a real racket. So, Adam, can you tell us about your pinkalicious experience, like yeah, in more yeah, detail? Yeah. Well, just that it's this it's this very it's a bar. I would say like two inches square, two inches <laughs> by two inches by one inch. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, I could literally. I mean, I could run to the bathroom and bring it up and, and hold it up if you're if you're really interested. If you guys want to go on a, a detour and let me do, or but or just take it. So it's like a a pink bar square. Yeah. Squarish and um, nice smell to it. Um, mm -hmm. And after just a couple of uses, it seems almost exactly the same size. I think it's like an everlasting <laughs> stopper of yeah. shampoos where I can uh -huh. just be using this for yeah. years and years. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I don't have a ton of hair, but I, I, I sense it will last a long uh -huh. time. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, I do think that if I had oily hair, it would probably be just right because I, I do sense that it's probably a little drying. But you know, uh -huh. jury, jury's out. Jury's out. Yeah. Okay. You're, I you're feel a very like good sport for trying it. That's, well, you know. again, I, I the idea. I mean, all those plastic bottles and everything mm -hmm. else. You mm -hmm. know, and if it lasts for a year or sure. even six months, that would be mm -hmm. a, a very great, a good thing. You know. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, I'll have to report back. Okay. Yeah. I feel like men, it, like if you had shorter hair, it would be a lot easier to use bar yeah. shampoo. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> That's why I was and thinking I, about cutting my hair off. Well, I'm glad you waited till after this. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I have a sense that must, it must have come from military applications. Right. Oh. I, mean, is that, I bet. I mean, it just has the feeling of like with, with food rations would come a bar of shampoo, uh -huh. you uh -huh. know? Like you can yeah. pack it in your backpack and, you know, uh -huh. but yeah, you know. may be That's right. Just, yeah. You know, we, yeah, we haven't like researched the origins, have we? Bohemian yeah. roots really yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Campers, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And I find that if I don't like the way a bar shampoo is performing, I just decide it's just regular soap. Yeah, and I right. just use it as soap. So there's no real loss. It is. You know? I mean, there's a wide. It's a wide umbrella. The soap world. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I but, think there was a time we all, at least once as a kid, tried soap as shampoo, right? Did you ever take that bar of <laughs> yeah, regular soap, yeah. ivory soap? Uh -huh. We were like, well, this will yeah. work, and you know, kind of did in a weird kind yeah. of way. Uh huh. So. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right. All right. So can I ask um, some questions about some of the shows you worked on? Yeah, please. Okay. So I I watched, I don't think I watched every single one in order, but I watched The Closer, mm -hmm. um, like in reruns, probably, mm -hmm. actually, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, and then, but I, I watched Major Crimes, and I think I watched that like front to back two or three mm -hmm. times during during the pandemic. Um, Thank you. And um, 25 cents at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope you did. And I loved, um, I loved uh, Mary Mary McDonald's. Is that her name? Mary yes, McDonald's. Yes, absolutely. You nailed I can't, it. I'm I, I'm blanking on her character name in that, but Sharon, I love that Sharon Raider. Sharon, Sharon, right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, she was one of my favorites, and I I loved her on Battlestar Galactica. Also, you don't have any ties to that, do you? I, I don't, except that James Duff, who created The Closer and Major Crimes, was a huge Battlestar fan and really huh. wanted Mary from that. And I don't know that you would remember this, but she was a villain. She was she was Kira's Brenda Lee Johnson's uh, nemesis. Mm -hmm. she yes, when she came on the closer, yeah, yeah, she was, and mm -hmm. it's one of those things where, like, you know, after a year or two, then you sort of make her the heroine, and it's kind of funny because people had to go through that whole, you know, journey. Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. can do it, like you did mm -hmm. with Robert, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. right. And yeah, she, when she was on the closer, she was very thorny, um, yeah, antagonistic, and like, yeah, yeah. And then they turned her into this sort of almost more wise. They turned mm -hmm. her more into her character from Battlestar Galactica. She was kind of like we talk about Lasha, Keisha. Oh yeah, she yeah, Laura like, on General like, Hospital. Yeah. 
yeah, like this very sage, wise, there's this calmness about her. But yeah. anyway, I just I thought it was a great show and um Thank you. And they killed you killed her off too. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, well You killed was... her off both those shows. Well you didn't do it on Battlestar Galactica, but um Anyway, uh, I was just well, wondering, which show did you like better, Closer oh or Closer Crowners? Which child do you like better? Um, oh, I know that's <laughs> hard. But... No, no, no. I mean, they're really oh, everybody bad. has a favorite. I had a yeah, that's true. I'm a mom's favorite. I'm a <laughs> yeah, favorite, but I know, I know. I am. Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, they were they were very different experiences. First, you know, for me, the Closer was certainly my first time working on a staff show, and. Um, you know, it was it was a very very well run show. And the scripts were really tight. And I just, you know would give as would I think all the other writers, James Duff, the creator, a lot. I mean, virtually all the credit for that because he he really had the voice of Brenda literally from the you know first moments of the pilot and could really keep things very tidy and, and orderly. And he also had a great you know a great story sense for for murder mysteries. I mean, I. I think I read a couple of Encyclopedia Browns when I was a kid, yeah. maybe one <laughs> Me John too. Grisham, but they were not, uh -huh. you know, I mean, I, I wasn't there and I could not really bring huge expertise in the field of, of you know, constructing mysteries. But fortunately, um, you know, I had I had great help with a, with a really talented writing staff and, and, and James to help me. And I was kind of able to bring kind of a, quirk, a quirky vision. I was really known, at least in the first few years of the closers the guy who wrote the Provenza and Flynn comedy yeah the funny episodes uh -huh. the, the wacky, oh, they let uh -huh. us have kind of a little bit of a wacky episode every now and again and mm -hmm. um, and then I also got to write some really dark ones so mm -hmm. no it was it was really a you know a very um uh you know nurturing experience and and, and, a, and a great one for me you know by the time we got to major crumbs we've been doing it for a while so it's it's hard to say that I had the same sort of excitement you know, seven, eight, nine years in, as yeah, we yeah, starting and figuring yeah. it out. But, um, but you know, it all, all comes down from the top, and we were very lucky to have such a talented, uh, you know, executive producer, showrunner. So that was really good. And, you know, I mean, it's funny. Every every experience really has been, I think, mostly defined by the writers' rooms, and they vary tremendously. You know, through the comedies uh, and and you know, obviously through the, these dramas that I've been talking about, but, um, you know, made, made great friends. I mean, writers, mm -hmm. the neurotic guys always, and women who were always trying to make each other laugh and top each other and all of that. It's a, uh, it's a fun place to be. You've seen, you've seen the Dick Van Dyke show. So <laughs> yeah, a little sense of what goes on, you know, when the mm -hmm. one closed the door, we're not as fun as that. But, <laughs> well, that's how much, like how, how does, I can't, I can't, I did watch the Dick Van Dyke show, but, but, um, it was a long time ago. So how does the collaboration work? Like, are you, are you given an episode to write or are you yeah. like given a character to the deal way, with? Or? Do you want to, I mean, I, I'm happy to really dig into this, but I, you guys, I know you guys got general hospital to talk about and stuff. So do you oh. want me to give you, a, can I give you a long, a longer explanation or? Yeah, like, sure. Sure. All right. So, um, you know, both in half hour, and I only worked in the four cameras. I didn't work on any single camera comedies like The Office uh, or Modern Family. Um, and the one hour dramas that I've talked about, The Closer and uh, Major Crimes, you know, you have a writing staff that's anywhere from eight to a dozen people. And on um, the dramas, and it, I guess it was pretty much the same in the sitcoms, you generally take one week at the beginning, you know, before in, in pre production. Um, just to discuss what the major arcs would be for the year if you were going to have a, a you know, a, a serialized elements as we really got more, we had more and more serialized elements as we moved along through major, major crimes. And then we had three parters and things like that. Originally on the closure, they were all sort of one-offs, but we always would pick a theme for a season like partnership or a woman in a man's world or um, you know, th those kind of sort of general themes. And then we would just fill a board, a whiteboard with uh, 60 to 80 one-liners. I mean, literally we'd all hmm. try to contribute five to 10 one-liners, maybe 60. Um, and it would be like death in the yoga community or mistaken <laughs> identity death, or just, you know, just very kind of broad notions. And then we would go around the room, the, around the, I should say the, the table, like a like a pitching rotation, and you know, 
Adam, you pitch this idea. Do you have a feel for it? And we'd sort of decide, well, okay, this is going to be the next story. And I would be, let's say, helming it. We'd all work on it collectively, sort of pitching ideas, coming up with the major story beats. And then we would fill whiteboards that were on all the walls with, you know, literally fade in act one, scene one, opening uh, the murder room or the, de- you know, where the murder scene, let's say, and where it is in time. And we'd literally, you know, we'd pitch out each, each scene. And then the writer or team of writers would go off with a pile of notes and come back two, three weeks later with an outline, get notes from the showrunner and then go uh, and write a first draft. And, um, you know, that was the process. And, and then James would usually take his his pass, the showrunner's pass on the script. Big difference there on a, a sitcom is after the showrunners would uh, do their pass, they would bring it back to the writer's table for a punch up. So we would literally take a, one full day before, let's say, a Monday table reading. We would take a, a Friday before <clears throat> to just go through. Anyone have a better joke at the bottom of page two? Anyone have a better below that is the out for this particular scene or the or the end of the act and we'd incorporate all of those changes and then you know on a sitcom you'd go to a table on monday you'd read it with the actors you get notes from the studio and the network and then you just rewrite and rewrite every day until you shot it on friday night in front of a studio audience wow that's, so that's, it really really is a true collaboration then it sounds like that's pretty cool yeah yeah, no, I mean, you know, the great thing, I mean, the, 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 on the plus side, you always know you've got help, you know, you've got somebody in the office next door who can hopefully help you unravel some knot in the plot that you've hit or some other problem. But, you know, I mean, I think if you really want to have true authority over your work, you become a novelist, right? Even then, you probably have an editor, but hopefully, mm-hmm. you, you know, but I mean, I think there, it, you don't get in it because you really want to, you know, be, be an auteur. You, you you go into television, I think, because you want and expect to be a collaborator. And, uh, yeah, that's how it works. Well, cool. Thank you. Sure. Keisha? Well, I, I'm wondering. I'm monopolizing. If, no, no, that's okay, Gia. Um, we had we had some strike questions, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, we're wondering, like, with the soap operas still running, do you know much? Of, can you explain why the soaps aren't affected well, yet by the strike? It's funny. I mean, I, I assume that all of those writers are non WGA members or working under non uh, you know non WGA contracts. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's still a lot of people who write uh, in the business, including uh, you know animation writers, many who are mm-hmm. not working under WGA contracts. I, I might be mistaken, but I think. It was the Simpsons who finally converted their, you know, staffs over to a WJ contract. And I think maybe it was you know, 20 years ago, but many mm-hmm. years after animated shows have, have been on the air. I think, uh, you know, it's, you know, we're trying to bring is, you know, all of those people into the fold. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but, um, you know, it's been it's been a slow, a slow process. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of the people that you know we would have liked, I think, I mean, I, I can't speak for the Writers Guild as a policy, but for example, you know, there's a lot of writing that happens on reality shows. And so mm-hmm. uh, during the last strike, it was very frustrating because, you know, as much as we wanted to bring in reality writer producers, um, you know, they were continuing to working and they were, you know, being loaded up with work because yeah. they were at that point really keeping, um, you know, the network's uh, schedules full since they were not mm-hmm. getting, you know, the uh, you know Conan O'Briens or Jay Leno's or all that stuff that could count on at least the reality shows coming in. So mm-hmm. uh, you know I don't know, but I mean I guess it's good for soap soap uh, viewers, uh, not so good for us. Yeah, we're well, feeling we, kind of like stinkers for watching General Hospital right well, now. Well, we don't know who's <laughs> writing it right now. Is it the like you know scab writers at the moment? Or we keep saying that, but we don't know. Mm. Yeah, we're, we're blaming a lot of stuff we don't like on on the uh, fact that it might not be the regular writers, but we could be totally wrong. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would check those credits. I'm sure they're out, you know, and, and see yeah. who's doing it. I, I honestly don't know who was writing it and who is writing it, but mm-hmm. not, not WGA people, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so now the actors are talking about striking too, is that right? Yeah, we're getting right down to it. I think their contract expires, you know, in these next several days. I thought it was the 30th or 
maybe, you know, it's, I think July 1st is, is when uh -huh. it, it, it expires. So um, it would be great if they are out with us. The DG, D, DGA, you, you know, recently went through their own negotiation and ratified a contract within the past I don't know, week, week or so. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I guess it's good for them. It would be, it'd be nice to have as much labor support among the other unions. And certainly yeah. but if the actors went out and the writers were out. I think that would really, um, yeah. Not things. I mean, that right would now, shut yeah. things down. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's, there's a lot that's still happening. I have friends who were, you know, work on the other side of you know, Teamsters and other labor in uh, New York, for example, where they're still doing a lot of movies and other things. They still hmm. have a lot of scripts that are ready to be shot. Uh-huh. Huh. huh. So, Interesting. Yeah, well, long, long, hot summer on the pavement here. That's all I can say. Yeah. Well, we're certainly yeah. pulling for you and hoping that this resolves itself. Thanks. Well, it's, we've been getting a lot of support. I mean, honestly, I, I, I have only heard nice things being yelled at us. <laughs> I'm sure that's <laughs> true. Um, yeah. I mean, that's not always the case. And I think it will yeah. probably not so much be the case when other people's jobs start to uh -huh. shutter as a result um yeah you know when other people are really out of work too because you know scripts are mm -hmm. not being done but we'll see right right mm -hmm. yeah did you have any more strike questions gia i don't think so i just was kind of wondering um i mean i think we we figured out why you know that that the soap actors and writers are somehow in some other category um mm -hmm. But I mean, I've seen Instagram posts, uh, you know, where they're supporting what's going on verbally or whatever, or maybe mm -hmm. even out there with them. But um, yeah, but we're, we're, we feel conflicted because we want, <laughs> we're a couple of old ladies who want our stories, you know, to keep going. <laughs> yeah. you know what? We, everyone wants their stories. And that's, yeah. that's a good thing. I mean, are you guys um, aware of what sort of the major issues are that we're striking over besides just sort of generally like, you know, better compensation? Um, no, um, I guess we're not really that aware of anything are you, beyond that. Are you that. interested? I can, I can yeah, talk. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. share with yeah. us. All right. Well, you know, some of the, the big the big problems that really have come up in the past uh, several years um, are around the size of writer's room, for example. Um, you know, never really had to be or legislated or sort of put in contracts that, that, you know, you would have writer's rooms with, you know, eight or 10 or 12 people. I mean, the studios really wanted to produce, you know, great shows for the networks. And the way you did mm -hmm. that was to put, you know, a full staff of experienced writers and more and more, you know, the studios are really pushing to, to make showrunners um, often, you know, the only talent to sort of pull things from beginning to end and sort of hiring the mi a minimal number of people to help out and to uh, fire those people, put the people on weekly salaries and then to get rid of them absolutely as soon as they possibly can. And I think, you know, one of the sort of things that's been very important, the business really is important for me was, you know, I, I from almost the very beginning, I think, you know, I, I was on a weekly salary for about half a year, 30 years ago. And hmm. then I was on a per episode, you know, as a story editor, then a co-producer, a producer. And really what that meant was that I was around from beginning to end, really until the last episode was edited and ready to go to air. And so there's a lot that you absorb as a future producer just by being there for the whole process. And when they really say, well, look, we're just going to hire a minimal number of writers for six weeks and lay them mm -hmm. off, then these are people who, you know, first off, are not going to earn very much compared mm -hmm. to what they, what, the, what they would have earned, but also mm -hmm. they just don't get that experience. And really, you know, what, what happens is that, you know, the, a showrunner is responsible for seeing that everything gets done and suddenly, um, you know, people just are just saddled with tons of work. It was really what happened to me on my last show, which was Fantasy Island, was mm -hmm. the first season when they hired me. They had me really the first time in 30 years on a, on a weekly salary. And mm -hmm. they said at some point after, well, I guess it was about six weeks, we just don't have money. So, you know, sending me home from Puerto Rico and it really left uh, these guys um, just with, you know, 80 plus hour work weeks and, and, and real frustration. So we're trying to mandate minimums um, 
you know, for I, depending I, I, um, you know, on what the show is going to produce for and how many episodes, but just to ensure that there will be a minimum number of writers. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's a way of preserving a middle class of writers because, you know, you'll, if you go out and start searching, you'll find a lot of stories about people who are on really good shows and mm-hmm. are making a living, you know, mm-hmm. sort of finish these short orders of six or eight episodes of which they're hired huh. for some lesser portion of them uh, in terms of the whole production cycle. And then, you know, are Uber and driving Uber or whatever else to sort of, you know, make ends meet. Um, mm-hmm. So that's Yeah, that doesn't seem right. That's no. And they're uh-huh. really fighting. And, 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 you know, that that's a big fight. The other one is, is AI, um, which is, you mm-hmm. know, a real issue. I think uh, writers don't want to have to rewrite an AI draft. And we really mm-hmm. are getting to the point where, you know, with proper instructions, you could probably get, you know, something that resembles a shootable script out of AI mm-hmm. and then hire a writer for a week to say, you know, make this, make this better. And I uh-huh. just think that we, we don't want to be in that place. And, and, and so far, I think the only thing that the um, consortium, it's, the, it's called the AM, AMPTP, the Association of Motion Picture Television and Television Producers, is um, a, you know a yearly discussion to sort of of the state of things, but they're not willing at this point to at all restrict the use of uh, mm. artificial intelligence. So you don't want to catch mm. that one, you know, nip that one in the bud. So, yeah, you know, and these are these are thorny things. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I hadn't. I wouldn't have thought of that. I hadn't even thought of that. No. <laughs> that's that's so depressing to think yeah. of. Yeah, but it's real. Because AI I can't draw from personal experience at all, like like you did, yeah. right, Adam? No, I had to go through that pain myself. I had to whatever. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, the, imagine the um, plagiarism problems from AI now in huh. like you know yeah. composition one hundred and one is going to be very hard for the yeah. professor to. That, that, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, one of the issues is that obviously to feed AI, you just, you know, dump in all of this material. And I think, um, you know, there's an issue about, you know, all of our material being hoovered up by uh-huh. the machine and, mm-hmm. and you know, uh-huh. no compensation there for yeah. being absorbed uh, and then huh. spit back material mm-hmm. based on what we collectively have come up with. So, mm-hmm. you know, these are some of the issues. Um, yeah. Anyway, hmm. to my knowledge, there's That's... been no meetings since we went out on strike. There have been no sit downs between our negotiating committee. They don't. They, one of the other things is that the AMPTP will only negotiate, with my understanding, is only negotiate with one guild at one time. So after us, it was the directors and now it's the actors. And eventually, I guess they'll come back to us. But anyway, in the meantime, you know, money's not being earned. Shows yeah. Not being earned. So, yeah. And so it goes. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot for yeah. you to have to deal with. Yeah, it's okay. And, it, and it, it's hard. Well, it's hard for, I think, us people out here in the world who who have so much still to watch, <laughs> you know, yeah. to imagine that writers are suffering. You know, it seems like there should be so much work, you know, and that everybody should well, be able to get paid a living wage. What, what, what I gather is I, I believe that Netflix thinks they can really wait us out, that they've got so much in the hopper and so much already uh-huh. on that, you know, whereas, you know, the networks have their regular broadcast schedules and I expect that, that they will really feel the heat much yeah. sooner. Sooner, but, right, right. You yeah. know, uh-huh. than yeah. streamers, but mm-hmm. anyway, mm-hmm. there it is. Yeah, well, we, we consume a rich diet of both, really. Yeah, we sure do. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. we're we're both hooked on ER right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. how far did you go back to the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Really, I somehow had missed. I'd missed the whole series when it was on, actually. So I was like, "Oh, this looks like it was uh, got a lot of episodes." So, we'll, you know, oh. and I'm learning a lot. We're learning a lot of vocabulary, and I feel yeah. like I could do all that pulsock stuff. And yeah, it's all it's great. Yeah, lavage. I, do, I do a lot of lavaging. Yeah, a lot of lavaging. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got young George Clooney. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. why I avoided the show initially because I didn't know what all the fuss was about. But uh, and I still don't. But uh, okay. no, I was gonna say, are you, have you come around or anything? Or not really? No, I don't know who my favorite character is. There's who do you think your favorite character is, Gia? 
Uh, well, probably, um, what's her name? The nurse. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Juliana Margulies. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, the heart of gold nurse. You know, you can't. Yeah. Good. Sherry Stringfield, she leaves kind of early, but she, she comes back. She, yeah, she leaves. For, oh, does she? Oh, thanks. Yeah, she returns, no. I think, in like, in like season eight or something. <laughs> if I'm remembering okay. correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did you have a favorite but, character, Bob? Um, did I have a favorite character? You know, I like the whole family. It was a great ensemble. I mean, I don't it really I was. It, yeah. It, the, and I was telling Gia, like, I think there's a lot that General Hospital could learn from ER yeah, as far as be, like. be more of a medical drama. You know? Yeah. And because and, ER is so good at touching on everybody's storyline, you know. Like, oh, yeah. And it's yeah. once a week, but you still keep up with everybody. The, the pace, yeah, the pacing is better. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you never lose track of anyone. Um, and I think, like, Benton, I think he's a really interesting character who's yeah. so hard to like, yeah. but yeah. he's 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 er complicated. Yeah. yeah. You know, what yeah. a great actor who doesn't come in for a while, um, who I've gotten to know, I've gotten to know the actor, Paul McCrane, really pretty well over the years. He directed several episodes, and he's just a, a wonderful guy. Plays this character, Romano. Dr. Romano, who will come in. I, I'm going to say. Is he, is he like real mean and he gets killed by a helicopter? Yes, bullet headed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh here's, a really, here's a funny <laughs> story. It's a, it's, here's a funny story that I can You'll forget, Gia. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he, he, should I say, he, uh, and a helicopter falls on him twice. So, so when you see the first helicopter, maybe I should have told you, now I've really spoiled it. Because now the helicopter goes, wait, he survived. Um, no, he, he, he only, he, his arm only gets cut off the first time but right you know, forget all, i'll forget all of this but he yeah. plays this great great surgeon who is miserable to everybody yeah so it's incredibly officious and terrible and so who's so paul mccrane who by the way if you if you remember the movie fame was the young monty uh -huh. that. remember that oh movie? yeah he had big red hair. He was just yeah, yeah, of, yeah. Uh -huh. Terms with his 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 homosexuality and stuff. Anyway, I I was but, so young when that came out. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, uh, sure, Gia. Uh, um, so um, Paul's, I think his son was being born. Anyway, it was a long delivery, and he ended up in the cafeteria at Cedar Sinai, in sort of the bowels of the building. And he was walking through the hallway and a couple of interns were walking by. And he, you know, he's a very friendly guy. He said, hi, how's it going? And they kind of shielded their eyes and kind of <laughs> sort of, and he realized they, they thought that he was Dr. Romano about to <laughs> shoo them out. And uh -huh. so he, like, the power of being on a, uh, uh, a, a you know, really well-known show. It's funny yeah. because it's talking to, all right, sorry, I'm in this zone, but I, I, Michael Preston <laughs> is, is a director I'm very close to who directed a lot of Chicago hopes. And he was mm -hmm. telling me a story about Hector Elizondo, who was mm -hmm. also, um, you know, he's, I, he played a lovable doctor, I guess, on that mm -hmm. show. And I think he had an issue. It was actually, I think during shooting, he, I don't know, maybe he passed out or something. He went to the, he went to the hospital and he ended up sitting near a family, and it was a young, it was a young man who said, you know, said, "Listen, I, I have something to ask you. Would you mind telling my mother that everything is going to be okay?" He said, well, I'm an actor, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> it, it will just, but you're saying it. He knows you as this character, uh -huh. and, and it really could make the difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so he did. Uh -huh. Apparently, a very nice guy. So uh -huh. the best doctors here, you're going to be great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so anyway. No, yeah. yeah. Now, Adam Arkin was on Chicago Hope, wasn't uh, he? He was. You know, Alan died today. I, that, I, that's yeah. what I was going to say. It's so yeah. sad. I, I had, I, Alan Arkin was one of my all-time favorite uh, actors. I had sweaty. such a crush on him. And, and I watched The In-Laws recently. And God, if, if anybody out there hasn't seen The In-Laws, I think that's a perfect movie. It's yeah, so yeah. funny. So He's funny. He's brilliant in that. I mean, they're really, I mean, you know, you, you, it's such a cliche. There was nobody like this person. But truthfully, yeah. you know, you can think of like so many roles where you go like, all right, we can get Brad Pitt for that or, you know, right. whatever, you know, any. But right. he was like 
always unique. And he yeah. never gave, I mean, I don't think, I never saw him give a bad, certainly performance that I didn't love. Mm -hmm. And he was a really good guy. Did you see him around town? I mean, you must have seen him every now and again. And no, time. and I was looking for him. Oh, all right. Okay. So, so occasionally, yeah. He, all right. So we would do this thing. Remember he, uh, day seven in, in, in Greeley? And occasionally uh -huh. he would give, he would come and, and like do a lecture or for film oh. study class, they showed Poppy, uh -huh. which is a movie that uh -huh. he, he couldn't make today because he wouldn't be cast playing a Puerto Rican waiter uh -huh. which he was uh, -huh. uh i don't know how well that holds up um but because you know they would sort of use him to kind of mix him up between like hispanic characters and anyway but um but he was always just really warm and generous and you know got to meet him a few times over the years um adam was um a guest character on the closer and also directed a couple of episodes at least at least one of my episodes and uh -huh. um, and then and Matt his um, you know Adam's brother, brother has, has remained a, a you know a good friend and actually stayed with uh -huh. us for quite a while when he um, first came out to LA from New York so you know wonderful people and it's you mm -hmm. know, it was eighty nine but you know it's all yeah soon. yeah yeah and that reminds me um, Adam was on a few episodes of Monk right and uh, right. yeah I did know that and one. and you know Tony Shalhoub from yeah, from yeah. The no, Wings. Another like you, I'm so glad you keep bringing up all of these. Well, he's another actors. one that I have a crush on, <laughs> Tony <Yeah>. Shalhoub. <laughs> super. I have super, a type. Like, you know, super. I mean, amazing actor. Great on on wings. Great on everything he's done. I actually yeah. got to uh, say a fast hello to him a few years ago when he did the band's visit on Broadway. And was of course wonderful in that. I've missed mm -hmm. most of, of Mrs. Maisel, so I, I'm sure he's great mm -hmm. in that. But um, these are really, really. I mean, I, you know, off uh, off the podcast, I could tell you stories about the people who were just, you know, miserable. But uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but on on the record, I'm glad you're bringing uh -huh. up all the really good guys. Oh, so. good. Well, I'm glad to hear that they're good guys. I love him on Monk. I can still watch Monk over and over again. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, very, it's funny because like Alan Arkin, also one of those. Yeah. And and as good at, you know, as, as accomplished at drama as mm -hmm. at, in comedy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if you saw ever saw The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. where mm, Carson uh, McCullers. Yeah. yeah. Alan Arkin plays a uh, uh -huh. mute um, hearing mm -hmm. impaired character. And um you know, amazing. And mm -hmm. wait until dark, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, playing the the killer, the stalker. So. Somebody was talking. Somebody was talking about wait until dark at Walmart today. The cashier. <laughs> what? Yeah, we've come full circle. Yeah, Gia had a, a experience at Sam's Club recently that sort of made her turn into a ball. And and I had the oh, similar no. experience at Walmart today. Sometimes oh, yeah, you just I, have to yeah. go there and yeah, there's stuff that's only from one of those places. And uh, yeah, is yeah, it from, so, is it from the other patrons or from the help or what? What's the oh no, it's, just the general. Uh, no, I mean nobody was the, the atmosphere. I would just, say I like, is yeah, it was. You just like, feel like less of a person, <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> and so but the cashiers are always really chatty at Walmart, and usually we wind up talking about dogs. But she was talking about wait until dark today, and uh, that's sort of how, interesting. Yeah, yeah, she couldn't remember. She's like, it was a Hepburn, right? And I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Richard Crenna actually. Uh -huh. oh, that's a great. I saw it recently. It really did you holds up. Uh -huh. I mean, it's really a filmed play. I mean, it was a play that became. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really pretty good. Mm -hmm. Really pretty good. Yeah. So, well, if you guys have had enough of, of my TV stuff, you probably want to get into your show. So maybe this is into a good our time. hospital unless, stuff. Unless, well, unless there's any remaining before uh, I go off and do my pinkalicious experiment. <laughs> 20, 20 well, days and come back bald or whatever it's going to do to me. Yeah, if, if you uh, ever want to do a follow up, if there is something significant to report about Pinkalicious right. or anything else we've covered here, yeah. you know, you're welcome anytime. Well, as the strike goes on, you got, if I have any any more like reports from the pavement, I will I will bring them. Okay. First. 
Okay. If there's yeah, any cool. messages you want us to deliver to our, our people. Yeah. We have we have we have listeners as far away as Malawi. No kidding. Just, yeah. Hello, yeah. Malawi. It's just one person. But. Yeah, and they only <laughs> downloaded us once, so we may have lost Malawi. <laughs> <laughs> Malawi. Oh. <laughs> and then we, we had a listener in Russia who we're assuming was Putin, and then he must have got distracted he with got, something. He got so. busy. Okay. Yeah. Well, any yeah. place where General Hospital can be watched, I hope people will be listening. So, <laughs> yeah. anyway... And if I yep. run, if you know, it could happen. I could run into Robert Gossett. Um, oh yeah, yeah. If, if he, he wants to come on the show, we'd be happy to have him. Yeah. Will, don't don't him. tell him to listen to our podcast because <laughs> at we really not... raked him over the coals for a while. Um, uh, I'll tell you, like wasn't... start of episode forty six or whatever. I'll yeah, 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 yeah. Because when he first came yeah. on, we, we yeah we. We try to keep we saying merciless. the character, not the actor. We love the, you know, but we forget sometimes and we're merciless. Like, uh, yeah. there's a character named Drew that I don't know if we will come around on Drew. No, we're but, not, not uh, yet, not yet. He will, he will never come on this show. I don't think. No. But um, no. but we do. We anyway. love we love Marshall now. So yeah, right. yeah. that well, would be happy rest of your podcast and happy July Fourth, you guys. You too. Okay, Thank you so, so much for coming on. on. It's really my pleasure. I'll see you guys soon. Very okay, take care. Oh. <laughs> He's oh, gone, okay. everybody. <laughs> Look, there's the Gio. Um, yeah, can we turn our cameras off now? Sure, we can. <laughs> I guess we've seen enough of each other. Okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't really matter. That but, wasn't as um, bad as I thought, though, watching each other. <laughs> No, not so bad, but it kept getting darker in here, and I wasn't sure whether to turn a light on or not. But uh huh. Um, but. So, are we going to keep on going here? You want? Yeah, we going? can. We could do a little hospital review, I guess. We've got a few episodes, and maybe, like, maybe just a few uh, observations or things that stuck with you. Maybe not our usual exhausting. Okay. I can't rambling. get my camera to turn off. Oh, that's okay, Gia. That's Why right. won't it? Don't worry, right. Gia. I don't want you to lose lose your connection altogether okay. um all right so a few things that we want to say i don't know i'll i'll totally start forgotten. with something that that i noticed um okay i think i noticed it today um okay so it's drew's last night right before he goes oh, to right. the big house yeah, and yeah. Okay. rather than spending it with scout he's with carly and sam is out at a bar with tante <laughs> right oh i didn't think about that i didn't think about sam being out too but you're right you're quite right so yep. scout's just sitting All there like concerned about, yeah. i i was <laughs> like know. i can't they dragged out the whole carly drew scene you know oh, which i yeah. guess if i liked their relationship i would have been pleased with that but i was like oh my god enough already people i and, know he's touching her knee how can she let that happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um uh the other thing that i thought was um I think I think they're listening to us. Yeah, uh, General Hospital because <laughs> Ava and Austin. Yeah, yeah. What did you and, think about that? Well, I was a little bit shocked. I missed a f the first few minutes today. I was busy and I I didn't turn uh -huh. it on, so I, didn't, I missed the first little chunk. But uh -huh. um, and I thought they would just. I knew they were going to have a kiss, of course, but I didn't think they'd yeah. take it right to the to the bedroom. To the bed, like, yeah. Did. Yeah. Um, I thought they were pretty funny. Um, mm -hmm. Her trying to get him out of there and him being reluctant to go and being yeah seeming a little a, a little actually enamored of her. Yeah, yeah. But they just keep changing this character on us. Yeah, you know? that's what I was thinking. Well, you don't really know if he's just a total squid now, right? I right. Mean, so that's, that's a new one. <laughs> yeah well he's not quite like a, a navy douchebag. bag yeah, <laughs> yeah not not to douchebag level but okay right good. but i don't know anymore uh who austin is and if he's just like acting just out of desperation you know i guess right. that's one thing yeah but, um as usual, it feels like there's another solution to their problem, you know, rather than the one they're they're choosing. I think, uh, which was to have sex. Uh, yeah. 
diversionary <laughs> tactic. I'd, I'd yeah, guess. yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and I remember making I lemons and a lemonade. I guess right, right. <laughs> oh, I like what you did there. I just figured that out. <laughs> I'm a little tired. <laughs> I didn't get any sleep last night, and uh, it throws oh, your. Oh yeah, there. from your new gig. How did that go? Oh, it was good, but uh, it wasn't really its fault. I just, I just, I wake up at the same time no matter what. You know, like some yeah. people can sleep all day. Like we have a mutual friend. We won't say her name, but it's Denise, and she uh. could. <laughs> <laughs> she was my roommate for a while and she could like we'd stay up late and she'd sleep till noon or one o'clock the next day you know and i'd be like yeah I can't do, you know i just pop up yeah. oh, you know at seven kind of no matter what um uh-huh. uh-huh so that's that's all so i'm just a little yeah. i'm elderly now so i i need yeah my... we're in our twilight years um we we, we are yeah yeah so that's what's uh, what we can expect from life now yeah anyway <laughs> i we we should we should talk more about hospital, but I wanted to say, wasn't that interesting speaking to your friend Adam, the writer? The writer, yeah. And I I I don't think I'd really realized how writers were being really sort of abused, you know, with those well, short term contracts and things like dreaming that. or something like that. I didn't realize it was literally yeah. the nuts and bolts of yeah of what the writers do. Like no um, job security, basically. Right, right. Like most being treated, being too well. It kind of makes sense when you think about all. You know, it's the man. It's always the man. It's always you know, the like man. like colleges try to get by with just with hiring. The agi- I was thinking agi- that too. Agi- yeah, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, and, and I was thinking that this is our our experience that was a yeah, little bit similar, yeah. which is mm-hmm. the way they just save money, but it doesn't build. Um, uh, loyalty or trust or like mm-hmm. he was saying knowledge of the whole production business yeah so yeah, yeah. so yeah mm-hmm. i hope they i hope they succeed but interesting just to hear him like how many things he's worked on and uh yeah he's had I, a great I wanted career to ask him if it was something he was interested in from the get-go but i forgot like how did he end up getting into that uh mm-hmm um, like, he did go to graduate school um, in California for for film, I guess. Oh, okay. So he meant to do yeah. this. It was, he didn't just yeah, stumble into I think it, so. But, yeah. yeah, and I think that Star Trek episode that he wrote, I think that was somewhere in like college years that he did that. It was wow. quite a long time ago. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, and in high school, he was always into the drama group stuff, you know? So I think yeah. he was always going in that direction. It's interesting to me to see people that kind of like know what they're doing in life. You know, I know, I know they, cause they, he was I doing think, all wow. this stuff in high school, like the writing, you know, and all of it. So yeah, what a always, gift to like, like know what your, what your yeah. list is early on. And, and uh, yeah, I was just trying like it, to be plan. invisible in high school. <laughs> you right. Know? Right. <laughs> I yep. hear you. I was. I think I was trying to be visible. Was what you know? I think I <laughs> yeah, was that too. Sort of, sort of both visible. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Anyway, but so we should probably. I don't know. We've gone. Oh, we had. Time. We did have a lot. We had. Oh gosh, what's concerning? I think is the Esme Spencer thing that's happening. You know. Oh yeah, and a real life bit of information. You may have seen this. Yeah. That yeah. has me concerned. Are you also concerned about Spencer? About his leaving? Yeah. Yeah. I am concerned. Yeah. yeah. We're and I guess the same Google feed. Um, yeah. Yeah, and to be <laughs> yeah. one of those yucky real life menendez yeah menendez brothers, brothers yeah. i know like, i'm sure that would be a fun uh, role for him but yeah uh, I, I hope he gets to use his arms in that role <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> maybe it's that's why they kill. hired him i can't remember how those horrible boys killed they killed their parents I know. Right? yeah they did yeah i don't yeah. remember how they did it but how, like um well i hope that doesn't taint his um thinking about life or anything going to that dark space Right. Um, and we don't know if he'll come back or what the arrangement will be. So we'll right, just have to right. wait and see. But yeah. Um, so you're you're disturbed by Spencer and Esme's interaction today? Is that what you're Well, they definitely funny? made some progress, don't you think? Sort of at least yes. just being yes. civil to each other and sort of bonding even, I think. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, what a tangled web. Oh, um, gee. Oh, gee. Yeah. And Trina, now, as much as I love Trina, 
mm-hmm. is kind of doing the thing I complain about men doing With to a men, lot of females. Yeah. 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 Where they're mm-hmm. kind of like um, holding like mm-hmm. all the cards and holding like being yeah. the judge of like how mm-hmm. you need to be to be worthy yeah. of me. And yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, yeah. And I was going back and forth like when Portia mm-hmm. was talking to Esme and sort of like the parenting manipulating classroom. her into the yeah. parenting class. I was yeah. like, oh, Portia, Portia. But then when she was talking to Trina and saying, you know, don't make your life smaller, there's all the whole world. And I started to think, you know, even even if she liked Spencer, you know, maybe she's got a point, you know, I, I'm not sure anymore. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can see any mother sort of thinking that way. Right. You know? Right. It's just cause it's a soap opera. So she's going to be devious and try to, yeah, that's the only part um, I don't like manipulate things, but yeah. yes, any parent would be concerned with somebody getting mm-hmm. involved with such a messy situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But I just, I also was thinking, oh, it's going to be a long summer if these are our characters, the whole, you know. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is. And then the Jordan, the Jordan, um, Ugh, Curtis, yeah. Zeke thing. Zeke. And, yeah. And, and Curtis was wearing some weird jacket that was. Um, yeah. The jacket the still looks cheap, Ill, but I kind of like the shirt. Uh, I think he could have lost uh, the jacket, but uh, yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, Mac I didn't. Lost, I like Mac lost his shirt. What'd you think of that? He sure did. That was a funny <laughs> little scene mm-hmm. where they have where they have what's his name Martin Martin like going oh oh you know intimidated by Mac's chest. Yeah, I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I like the idea of Felicia sort of sniffing around Martin to see what's happening. Yeah, she'll there. figure it out. Felicia's she will. Yep. this whole town. Yeah, we now know. Yeah, that would yeah. be nice She's, if that was really like what started to sort of slowly rise to the surface that Felicia really is. Yeah, you know. She's a sly one. She's Yeah. A, mm-hmm. is, is she would she be a sleeper or a dark horse? Yeah, or, sure. She's you know, yeah, sort of like, yeah, the unassuming kind she's of flying under the radar, but Yeah, but totally. Really, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to all the ones that are out there flailing their arms around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with their guns in the back of their pants and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we had some stuff. We had a fair amount of stuff happen today. We did have a fair amount of stuff. Um, yeah. Hmm. So I don't know, but I'm now I'm now I'm just worried about the strike and everything, and I'm I'm, and I'm feeling so, sort of guilty for watching. I know. Um, maybe we should I be know. out there in the ninety-two degree heat, like marching around. Maybe, you know, yeah, maybe that's why, like, like, it seems like soap actors don't get the sort of respect, you know, from like the other acting community because there's some that was sort of is there resentment because they're but maybe they don't maybe they don't feel like they ought to be part of it because right, I mean, would yeah. they, you know, like, would they be mm-hmm. snobby and think that they shouldn't be part of it? I kind of that was the other yeah. question I would have asked. Um, we mm-hmm. have to have him back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Adam was, uh, what, in what regard are soap writers and soap actors uh-huh. held by the other yeah. um, shows? You know, is it is there a, a big line drawn between them? Is it like, uh-huh. oh, my God. Yeah, that would, have, yeah, that would, I'd like or, to hear his answer to that. He'd probably be pretty diplomatic, but. Uh, or is it like, you know, a gig's a gig and writing's writing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I was curious. I'd be curious about that. Um, yeah, it is interesting. Well, you know, and and actually, since he knows Robert Gossett, you know, it's interesting because a lot of actors, it seems like their goal is to use a soap opera as a springboard, right, to either a prime right. time show right. or a movie like Jimmy career. Or and the various people, yeah, that have, yeah, gone yeah. on, and then they like they started on a soap. And, yeah, yeah, but some people do come back, like Robert Gossett, yeah. you know, and. Yep. And uh, Allie Mills, she w- who played Heather, you know, most recently. Oh, she yeah, had right, 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 right. Yeah. You know, so it's not yep. sort of something that people don't do ever. Um, and it seems kind of um, cool when they do that, you know. I think so. I mean, and the real life Franco being on there for a while yeah, was kind of, yeah. you know, like just because uh-huh. he wanted to be. And, of course, Brick. I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you of course, go. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, especially, yeah, it seems like a lot of like ESPN, I think is axing a lot of people. I don't think they've axed him yet, but I guess he's got his backup. Oh, are you? Oh. Yeah. yeah. But I just think, I mean, even more than an, another actor, somebody coming from like the cool macho sports world, who yeah, thinks, yeah. like who's like cool enough with themselves to like yeah I'm yeah. be on a soap yeah it's right yeah you know. <laughs> yeah the rest, the and there's probably a lot of jocks it, you know? who watch soap operas you know I'm sure like they, they might, get yeah, stuck in a hotel a room downtime. or something right yeah. yeah yeah did you see I just recently I w- I watched the episode of ER where um George Clooney and a couple other people were watching a, a soap like in their yeah. little like yeah, lounge. That was funny, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, that. Funny. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering about the George Clooney thing too, because I think I may have also avoided it because I didn't get the, the, the um, big hoopla about George. Clooney yeah. Way back yeah. Then. But, uh-huh. um, I, yeah. And I, I was struck by the thought that like, I think he's more handsome as an older mature man than he was, uh-huh. then. you know, and so yeah. I'm thinking like, what, what did people see then? Yeah, um, and his character is, you know, he's definitely a questionable character. Right. You know, he gets redeemed more as time goes on. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, he definitely has his good qualities and he's compassionate, you know, in some yeah. ways. But yeah. He's a player. But he's a player. He's definitely but. a player. He's a dog. And I liked how Adam talked about the arc of the Mary McDonald character from cl- the closer uh-huh. to. Uh, yeah. And there were mm-hmm. a couple characters that kind of got totally changed from one series to the next, but we just went with it. Uh huh. We, just, we uh-huh. just went with it, and that's what we do on soaps too. We're willing to. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, we go yeah. with it. Um, mm-hmm. Should we yeah. say anything else about General Hospital, or should we wrap this up? Um, hmm. I feel sorry for anybody who's still trying to listen because we've been on so long. Yeah, we have been on long. I know. I'm sorry, everybody. Well, I guess we're hitting the hour mark now. It's oh you know, my god, could be. Wow. I guess we should wrap it up, Gia. And we apologize okay. if we didn't cover enough hospital. But we'll catch uh, up next time. But we brought but you like a real life writer. Wow, a glimpse into the world of television writing. Yeah, some content, some actual yeah. solid content. <laughs> yeah, a legitimate. We still, like... on. We still nattered on a little bit about bar shampoo, but. <laughs> Yeah, he probably looked at both of us and been like, "Oh man, <laughs> no, our, our hair looks ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> they look like clowns." <laughs> but he was—he he seems like a real adult, and he couldn't say that, so that was nice. He, he is, yeah. I, I he his dignity took a blow <laughs> tonight, I think, but <laughs> but yeah, he was quite quite uh, mature and and handled us i think as yeah diplomatically as anyone could yeah very interesting i i got lost in the references toward the end there with the highfalutin movies you two were discussing but uh oh did you ever see the (laughs) in-laws i don't think i did when you said Uh, anybody who has seen it i was thinking i don't think i did but i'll have to uh, look for it yeah it's alan arkin and peter falk and it's so funny uh, really i like both so i'm sure yeah Yeah, and they play like their their kids are going to get married. Alan Arkin's daughter yeah. is marrying Peter Fox's son, I think. Yeah, and Alan Arkin plays a dentist, and he's it's it's just so funny. Well, yeah. Maybe I did, but like so many millions of years ago, was yeah, it? Yeah, kind of it movie. Could have been it. So yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it ho- it holds up so nicely as a as a comedy. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah. All right. So, well. All um, right, Gia. Yeah. This was a lot of fun to have a. Real yeah, point. it was a treat, and I knew you'd be yeah. excited when you heard his Star Trek story. I can't believe you withheld that. I really did have a little freak out. Like, <laughs> yeah, <"Ooh."> sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, very yeah. cool. So thank anyway. him again. If you talk to him again, tell him. I will. Thanks okay, so Gia. Much. All right. All right. And thanks anybody who's still listening. We'll see you yes, next time. Yes. Thank you. All right, Gia. Good night. Okay. See ya. Bye.